Today on Expert Showcase, we're going behind the episode with our guest, Tavis Bucklin. He's talking about fierce competition, three things you need to know that will make you the obvious choice to your prospects. So, Tavis, as we were talking about, uh, in this uh, behind the episode segment here, you and I are going to have a little uh, chat about the episode, about your background, about how you position and market yourself, as well as helping other people do that. Chris is going to, you're going to hear the keys clicking in the background. Uh, that's not Chris uh, checking his email, as far as I can tell, because we can't see what he's doing, actually. The audience can see on screen that he is taking some notes about our conversation. And then after we, uh, you know, try not to go too long winded in our conversation, I'm going to flip uh, it over to Chris. He's going to play uh, the role of coach consultant for us and sort of feedback to us a little bit of what he's been hearing for our benefit and for our viewers' benefit. Sound good to you? All right. So, Davis, tell me a little bit how you got into um, you know this this whole world of positioning and authority. Um, what what's your background that brought you to this? Well, uh, my background's in SEO and doing marketing for small businesses. Okay. And in that, I think in the beginning you have an idea of, of your focus, and then you start branching out. People wanting you to do more things, and I was getting spread pretty wide, mm -hmm. and I wanted to really focus myself on one particular niche and figuring out what it was that I was doing best and at the time I was trying to build some of my own authority and looking at, at some of those aspects of, of how I could position myself and it, so, it sort of happened along the way as I started learning of some of these things and, and putting them into action I started doing some of those things for my clients and they started asking me more and more about it and so it was taking my background in SEO and, and, and some of the marketing that I was doing and just putting it in a different direction instead of uh, driving traffic. Now what I'm doing is keeping prospects around, keeping prospects and, and converting them. So it went from from creating prospects to just converting prospects is really what I'm doing. Excellent. Now you um, are, are coming to it from this marketing background. I always find it interesting because you know it, when marketers come in, in one of two flavors when it comes to themselves, they're, they're either really practicing what they preach or they're so caught up in their clients that they, don't, they do a terrible job marketing themselves. How do you prevent yourself from falling into that trap? How, how do you position yourself? How do you market yourself to reach out to your, your client, uh, the well, client that you're trying to attract? Well, in what I do, the, the, the biggest thing that I do is create digital assets. So these are interviews and articles and things. And so I've I've got a thing with myself that I do something at least every 30 days so that at the end of the year, I've got some good pieces out there that are up on page one when people come to find me. They can see these interviews. They can see articles and see things that I'm doing and get a feel of who I am just from that besides you know, having a blog or some of the other things that people do, I've got these pieces out. So for every 30 days, I make sure that I've got something out there. So, and, and for for people who don't necessarily, you know, I, I you know, I think most people are going to have a sense of what you're talking about. When, when you say a digital asset, give give us some, some some concrete examples of what you mean. So these these would be any type of an interview or uh, you know, in a magazine or or a, you know, a news piece that's out there that people can find. Uh, out on of, out of the internet somewhere and hopefully they're up on page one when they're searching your name that's where you really want to put these and right. and be able to to uh, define these things with other people talking about you it's pretty easy for somebody to go to your website and read your blog and, and that's sort of what we had talked about is marketing yourself at you know at like an ad really is what it is right. uh, is to have other people talking about you the, these digital assets um, are, are great for that Absolutely, absolutely. And then, so you're, it sounds like you're either combining that with your SEO background to get it on page one, or you're trying to position yourself with really popular, um, you know, kind of places to get that interview or land that interview so that they're, they're such good traffic generators, generators that they're getting the, you onto page one, right? Uh, uh, yeah, a little bit of that, but what we're really doing is focusing on getting, getting it for, uh, to, to rank for a person's name. So that's a little bit easier to, to do than to rank for, a, sure. A real popular keyword. So it's, it's as long as your name is not John Smith, that poor person has a tough and, time, man. And you know, it can be horrible. John, I'm sorry. Somebody man, looks, I'm sorry. looks you up and they find five other guys that have you know the prison records and they can't find you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Exactly. So you know, I'm I'm fortunate there with 
Tavis Buckland, it's pretty easy for me to, 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 to do that, and some of my clients have had that, that same luck. But really, yeah, that's what it is, is having people, finding other people talking about you. That's, right. that's I've been fortunate, too, but I have a cousin in Holland who has my exact same name, and he <laughs> plays in a band. And so, you know, for a while, he, he, was, he was on page one, but I pushed him out of my way. I, I, sorry, that's, man. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> that's, that's a great tactic. You've got to get enough stuff out there that you can push those exactly. things Exactly. When in doubt, outproduce, right? <laughs> right. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about how you define your ideal target market, because that's something we're always uh, talking with people about. I mean, uh, that it's important to focus, it's important to niche. Who are you trying to connect with and attract ideally? Well, you know, when I first started, I was just, I, I didn't know exactly who would be my, my, my perfect client, and so I just started locally. And that's a good thing to do is to start local, working, you know, working in, in that, that direction and figure out who do you work best with. And for me, I, I like uh, speakers. And coaches and consultants seem to be great. Speakers are, have been pulling ahead, and so since I've only been doing this uh, in, in trying to narrow this down for about a year now, the the, the what my market is going to be, um, I'm coming coming uh, narrowing it in on speaking. But you know, really, I could work with just about anybody. But that's that's who I seem to be drawn to most. Okay. Yeah. Well, it makes a lot of sense though, because obviously a speaker is out there, kind of doing a natural PR with what they're doing already. So you're just enhancing what they're doing, really helping them position themselves, get those connections, get those interviews, right? And and, and that's why it's been a little bit tough for me to narrow that down because speakers often are authors and they are often coaches as well. So they kind of fall into sure. that same a lot category. Of, a lot of overlap so, there. Yeah. A yeah. lot of overlap. Yeah. Well, that's good stuff. So. Um, so at least once a month, you're trying to get that interview, get that that uh, digital asset there. Are, what else are you doing, uh, or are you doing other things as well? I mean, you mentioned blogging. I mean, do you do you do things like that? Are you kind of a social media kind of person? Uh, do you do video? Uh, uh, what's what's your favorite actually, flavor of uh, actually, doing things? Lately, lately I've been doing a lot of writing, and, and uh, I've got a book that's coming out soon. Excellent. Um, and so that's what I've been working on a lot. The next step is going to be to do more video. Just from an SEO standpoint, I think that gets gets you ranked high real quick, and that's probably one of the strongest things you can put it into your your blogs. And you know, it can be used over and over. Transcribed. There's so many things that you can do with that. Right. that I think that's the best starting point for any content, really. Even creating a book, multiple videos can be broken down and, and put into a book. So I think that is definitely the future for just about anyone who wants to get. Get in yeah, I can certainly say myself personally. I got into video completely, essentially by accident because you know I was much more a writer first, uh, and then then was doing some audio podcast kind of stuff, and then was doing video to promote those things. And then I realized, what am I doing? If I shoot the video first, I've got all of it, right? Because I can transcribe it, as you said. I can pull the audio track Absolutely. out. I was doing it in the exact reverse order, and the light bulb finally went off and said, "Dude, do the video first. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the top of the pyramid. Exactly. Well, Tavis, we can talk about this for quite a while. I think we can keep digging in all different directions here, uh, but I want to make sure that we, we stay true to the clock and uh, to our, our audience. And so I want to flip over to Chris at this point and say, Chris, you've been listening in. I, I hope you haven't been doing your email. Uh, you, you've been taking the notes. The, the audience knows whether you've been honest or not here. Um, you know, I know you've been trying to, you know, You've been on Match.com over there this whole time. Haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? You know what is a what is a you know a divorced guy to do when he's looking for a good good looking powerful woman? It's all about positioning. It's right? all it's about a, you know. positioning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, for, first of all, thank you, thank you, Mark. First of all, Tay, this great job on the episode. Uh, incredible content. Um, it was great to see how nice, short, and succinct it was. For those of you who watched other episodes, you know you know that Mark Cosman guy can talk a long time. He's, as the pot as the pot calls the kettle, you know, a different yeah, color, um, exactly. so, so to speak. But no, in all sincerity, great episode, uh, Tavis. I'm so glad we had you on today. Um, and I agree with what some of the things that Mark has said. Um, only some. Like if I, only if, some if, of them? If, if oh, I agree man. with everything, he gets the big hat. <laughs> I'm that's... insulted, man. I'm insulted. I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll see him walk off screen. I can't have the candle follow him. But anyway, yeah, exactly. He's gone. Anyway. So... Uh, but I agree with the, you know, I agree with what Mark was saying that, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, it fits right in the way, you know, our languaging is the same. So I'm going to give you some feedback on, on the episode and also what I just heard, ask you a few questions, um, and we'll go from there. So I love the fact that you started off in SEO, 
um, and marketing for businesses found out you were getting spread too thin and wanted to focus. Um, it's something that a lot of coaches and this, the guy on the purple couch, Mark, the guy on the purple couch again, he's, he's not focused. Again, right? He's not focused at this point. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, focus, focus. So, but that's what a lot of coaches, and, and I was guilty of it too. I remember when I started my coaching business, I joined the John Maxwell team, started a coaching, teaching a public speaking business around leadership. And I felt everybody needed my message and everybody needed everything and everybody, everybody, everybody. I was like, you know, ooh, just get it out to everybody. And I, I couldn't focus. And what I didn't realize back then that I realize now is that focus is the key. Even if you're mildly successful at doing a few things, the more you focus and the more you focus your energy, the better the, you know, the better you get. Um, so before I go into other feedback, you know, Tavis, have you found the same thing that, that once you found yourself spread really thin, that as you started, you know, kind of working your way down, that your success has been increased by your, you know, the amount of success you've had is kind of paralleling the amount of the amount of the increased focus you've had. Have you found that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when you're out there trying to do a little bit of everything, especially in marketing, I was working with all types of businesses, you know, attorneys, doctors, dentists, um, and then and then you know a lot of small businesses. Each one is a little bit different. When you're working with the same type of client that have the similar goals, it just creates efficiency. It creates your focus and your drive in one direction and not in several directions. And then also with the different types of services, uh, creating lead funnels and doing all these different things, trying to get certain pages to rank, help them with content. You're working in, in too many directions at one time. You, you really are not going in one direction. You're just kind of spreading out. And what you really want to do is focus everything in one direction and move forward. And so that was something that I need to realize for myself. And as soon as I started to do that, then things just took off. Exactly. And, and also, you know, it's akin to what we talk about, about, you know, the way we work with content creators is the fact that we want you as a content creator to focus on what you're good at, which is writing the content and or speaking the content, meaning just worry about the content and let somebody else worry about everything else, getting it out there, getting absolutely. it ranked, getting it distributed, the whole nine yards. Um, I heard you say absolutely. You know, did you do you find that do you find that when you coach people, when you have people, when you work with people who then just also focus on what they do best and let you or somebody else do what you do best? You know, what do you find their success? Yeah, how, what what does that do for their success? Well. Like I said, I think you get better at it when you're focused on just one thing, but it's a lot more than that. When you become the best at one thing, you can be recognized for that. And right. it's pretty hard to be known as the greatest marketer of all time, right. but being known as the greatest lead funnel generator, you know, or, or you know, one particular piece, that's a lot easier for you to do. You can become an expert in a particular little niche and not the greatest of, of everything. So I think that's that's part of it too. It's just being better and, and being able to succeed and deliver exactly what the piece that one person's looking for. Yeah, that's awesome. And I, and I love how you also talk about you went from creating prospects to converting them. And just like a content creator, you know, you're, you should be really focused on creating that great content. Um, you, you know, if you then focus, if you then once again have people help you do everything else, and you also focus on converting your prospects, that's a much better use of your time. Would, would you Absolutely. say that than worrying about going out and having to get all those prospects? Because it's a lot of mental energy to go out and get a lot of prospects and to go out right. and, and do prospecting and, and you know it, it takes your time away from being able to create your great content right absolutely and what you see a lot of people doing is they're either uh, generating prospects themselves or they're paying somebody for prospects and they get X amount of prospects this big lump and then they get the, the conversions are over here so when they want more clients or more customers they turn up the prospects a little more and a little more and for me it, it's it's a lot like trying to heat a house with broken windows you're just turning the heat up every time you want it to be warmer when if you just step back for a minute and spend your energy to fix the windows you can turn the heat back down and and things work how they should be working and you're not spending all that extra energy or money doing things that that really you don't need to be doing so yeah, ex exactly. Mark, I, I, from knowing you, I have a feeling you have a good comment in there about this. Why don't you, what do you, what do you, what, 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 let's my, say about you. About my, dra about my drafty windows, you mean, or what? <laughs> <laughs> Lately, you know, I, yeah, I need because to spend some time on those windows. It's cold but. over there, right? 
It, it is, yeah. Right no, but absolutely, Tavis. I, I, you know, again, I, I think we're we're in in a sense we're all speaking the lang the same language so much. It's it's hard to uh, to differentiate and, and and kind of you know go any deeper. I mean, you're saying it so well, so I don't want to just be redundant. But but yeah, I think what what people discover is that the more they focus, the more they narrow that niche, it becomes easier to become recognized. And then with what you're doing, which what I love is when you're getting those those credibility triggers, those authority triggers, those those things that those thirty third party endorsement kind of references, now it makes it that much easier because you know people are recognizing your authority more quickly, so there's less work on that prospecting. They're they're more quickly uh, you're not having to win them over as much, right? or spend as much energy winning them over, right? So when you get Absolutely. to that, you get over that that hurdle of getting other people to talk about you, getting other people to refer to you, at, you know, in what they're writing. Suddenly, it's like, oh, okay, yeah. I mean, I, I'd be, I'd love to work with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and that's such a great point. That that kind of goes into the, you know, the, the last big point I was going to bring up about the key being, you know, to get other people. Uh, to get all of your stuff to show up with other people talking about you. You know, we talk a lot about visibility, credibility, and authority. And it's great to build visibility. It's great to build credibility. And it's also great to become the leading authority. Along the way, I, I love what you talk about, Tavis, is the fact that you have to end up having other people talking about you to build that, to take it to the next level. I mean, we've right. all seen people who've been visible. We've all seen people who we believe are credible because of what we see and we all believe that people are the leading authority in something maybe because they read a book or something like that but until other people say it it's it's just it's only one level and once other people say it it goes to you know the next level it's the same thing as you know I I released a book a couple years ago called The Secret Blueprint to More and I had a, a guy a local guy here who's also part of uh, the Glazier Kennedy Insider Circle named Charlie McDermott he's got a kid on ABC's television show The Middle so if you ever watch The Middle the, the kid who plays Axel his name's Charlie McDermott, and his dad still lives right around the corner from here and runs a, a local group. And you know, we got the chance to to know each other and become friends. Um, and I had him write the forward for that. And you know, I you know, let's face it, part of it was you know he he was a friend, and part of it, let's face it, we both knew that having his name in the book would help a little bit to give that to give that authority and that that you know additional factor. So it's always good to, you know, it's always good to have that. For just real quick, um, you know, and I know this is kind of let's face it, this is a loaded question, but real quick, have you, you know, how have you seen people's successes increase when they go from um, just having their own stuff out there to having other people talk about them? Has it been minimal, or has it has have you seen kind of it like being compounding and exponential in, in, in their success development? I think I think it really depends on the person and and where they're at in their career, but. You brought up a good point of the association, like with your book. When you're associated with big brands like ABC, NBC, and you've got the you got a couple of little logos somewhere that people recognize and they, they pick that up, those are trust triggers. The first thing that I hear from clients is that right away if they, they put those logos somewhere, they have people asking them about them, asking about them and wanting to know where where were you, where were you noticed that? And that brings up a conversation right away. So they see they see that kind of stuff happening right away. So you know that people are recognizing recognizing that um, so I think I think the idea takes off right away they see that they see the the uh, see it working from the very beginning just at that aspect of it so so I, I think that for just about anybody it works it works right off and then there's different levels obviously of what how, how much are your clients worth how much would it be if you just grabbed a couple more clients from having that authority every month um, so it can the, the success rate varies quite a bit but but I think you also bring up a great point, and I really love the way you answered it. It does depend on your starting point, but the, the odd part is, is that, from what I've seen anyway, the people who are lower on the credibility scale actually seem to to progress further, faster, um, and higher when they get that when they get that additional credibility than somebody that's a little bit higher already. At least that's what I've seen anyway. Yeah, um, yeah. I have one last real quick question for you. It's interesting that you brought up that you focus on creating digital assets every once every thirty days. Um, I'm going to put you on the spot here and go: Is there a reason or a method behind only? Producing it once every thirty days is that is there is there some I, reason why it's that that frequency or 
I think that that's a minimum. You want to have something out there every month and just get on that schedule. If there's something that you want to promote um, specifically and get it out there, then by all means go ahead and do that. But I think at minimum you want to get something out there every month. Um, it's not like if you're putting out your content, what you're that's a little bit different. You want to have that on a regular basis. But when when you're just putting out these digital assets, you don't need to have, you don't need to do this twice a week, <laughs> kind of thing. You know, it's it's. You can only have so many of them out there, but having but putting together a great press kit on your website, things like that, and having these these little references for people to go on your website, hit your, your press kit, and have links to all of these things that are out there. I mean, it, it just is a tremendous help. Awesome, and I'm so glad I asked the yeah. question because Mark, I'm going to rivet at this point, and I'm going to go frog. Um, <laughs> it's an inside joke. We'll explain it all later. Um, <laughs> keep watching these episodes, and we'll eventually explain what a frog moment is. What a frog moment is, yes. But here's uh, the thing of it. So, in short, when I heard digital assets from from you, Tavis, <laughs> I was thinking exactly what we're doing now: recording video. And now, what I understand you to mean is that it's really the larger scale, the digital asset. Really Really is an interview, a magazine, a news piece, maybe even an info product, something a little bit bigger than a blog, a little bit bigger than a, than a regular piece of content. Um, it, it, do, do I kind of have the, the right interpretation now? Absolutely, absolutely. So as soon as we are done here, if I were to show up in the news saying that I was interviewed by the two of you, um, that would be a great digital asset along with the, the content and everything that's going on here. Right. Um, that makes that makes perfect sense. Yeah, that, so it's it's getting that at least once a month shooting for that that sort of recognition from without, you know, that was really validating all the content that you're generating on a regular, you know, on your regular publication rhythm. So I think that's a a, a really smart way to go. Excellent. So uh, once again, thank you, Tavis. I'm going to turn it back over to Mark for a little bit for a little bit of closing comments, your closing comments, and then uh, I will wrap us up with a little bit of a call to action and rolling of the tape. So Mark, why don't you take it back over? <laughs> well, I you know I think we've we've said it pretty much all, but so you know it, it's been you know great talking with you, Tavis, because I, I think we do have very similar missions, and I think people really do have to listen to what you're saying. Uh, it's really important to take it to that next level. I think Chris and I tend to focus more on helping people create that rhythm of regular content. I'm really liking the enhancement to this of, of what you're talking about with this right. really going outside and getting the, the that outside endorsement uh, and, and being more aggressive about getting that because it is obviously incredibly powerful. Uh, you know, I, I, when when uh, I wrote a book back in 2010, and we, we probably spent more time trying to get the the blurbs and the quotes on the cover than we did writing the book. To be quite honest with you, because we knew we wanted Jeffrey J. Fox, and we knew that we wanted Dan Kennedy, and we knew that we wanted uh, you know the, these people on the cover because for the very reasons that that you've been talking about. So they are those those things that make people then want to buy the book. So um, excellent stuff. So I really appreciate you you bringing that perspective. Uh, I think it really does enhance uh, our definition of authority, and I think we'll be uh, we'll be talking with you further about ways that we can synergize this uh, even for our own clients and stuff, and, and see where we can get to. So appreciate it very much. Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. So Chris, I'm going to flip back to you and say yes. Uh, let's let's wrap us up because I know that people are waiting with bated breath here to get to Tavis's actual episode. Yes, I'm sure they are. <laughs> Tavis, I want to throw it to you. Just did you have any last words you'd like to, to leave us with today before I wrap? Well, us don't up? don't put it that way. Any last words? Well, I mean, you're, you're going to shoot him or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Do you have any additional words of wisdom that you would like to share with our, with, with the viewing audience at this point, especially? The guy in the brown, the guy in the brown recliner's back, Mark. He's watching. Okay. Because he's now finally intent. He's re uh, he's ready for your 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 words of wisdom, Davis. I think I think the most important thing is is you know when you get to that level and you're waiting to to be become that expert, nobody's going to come along and do it for you. Nobody's going to come along one day and knock on your door and say, hey, we want to put you in this magazine because we feel you're an expert. You need to put yourself out there. You need to be able to, to make yourself accessible and let people be discoverable. So I, it, it is a little bit of preparation, a little bit of work, and you're going to find uh, some ways that you can do that if you want to grab that authority uh, the authority positioning guide. There's some good tips in there and to get you started. So. 
Awesome. Well, well and speaking you. of that authority guide, Chris, let's get to the episode. <laughs> now. Well, you know, you, you're going you're gonna to wrap us up and then get to that episode because people want to know where that website is. So, exactly. What should people do, Chris? What should people do? <laughs> so this is the ado before without the further ado. Exactly. The, the, the much you, ado before the ado before we get to the role. <laughs> and okay. if you've watched other episodes, you'll get that joke too. Pretty soon we'll get a following of people just because they want the inside jokes on these things. <laughs> so first of all, if you're a speaker, a coach, or a consultant, and – you realize that the positioning that we've kind of hinted about here is going Just to little. help you stick around and watch Tavis's Tavis's episode because uh, you need to hear what he's got to say. It'll give you all his contact information, and you'll get a chance to learn and, and experience and get yourself uh, positioned as a higher authority. And by the way, for those of you who took the under, you win the bet. Anyway, <laughs> if you are a coach or consultant and you realize that the power of video and the power of being on Expert Showcase can help increase your business and help take you further, faster, quicker, um, in an easy to use, uh, safe manner. That's about all the descriptive words I can give. I mean, we, wait, you know, how, how easy was it to, to go through the application process and get all, and uh, go through all this process, Tavis? Was it easy for you? Yeah, it was just a couple of minutes. It was real simple, yeah. Awesome. So if you got a couple of minutes, your coach or consultant, take those. Go over to expertsshowcase.com, click the apply button, and send us your information. We'll check it out. And, and uh, if, we're, if we feel you're a good fit, we'll have you on the show as our next featured guest, uh, guest expert. And finally, if you're a coach or consultant and you realize by now that the power of video is where you need to be, you need to harness the power of video and video content to push your business forward faster and you're ready to get started, head over to videocontent.agency. That's videocontent.agency. Check out the services page. Take a look at our visibility, credibility, and authority packages. Decide which one's for you. Get in contact with us and let's see if we're a, a, a good fit to work together. And now, without any further ado, I'm going to... Roll the tape. Today on Experts Showcase, our guest expert is Tavis Buckland, talking about fierce competition. Three things you need to know that will make you the obvious choice for your prospects. Tavis, welcome to Expert Showcase. We're so glad to have you as our expert guest today. How are you doing? Good. Thanks, Mark. Excellent. Well, give us a quick rundown here so that we can get our audience's mind in the right place here about what we're going to talk about in today's episode. Well, we're talking about rising above uh, all your competition, basically setting yourself apart. Um, you know, getting back back to some of the older days where people were running a lot of ads, we get, we get immune to um, this is what I can do, A, B, or C, and when everybody's doing that, it sort of drowns out, and we don't we don't see any of that. It, we we sort of become blind to it, and even in some of the modern ways people are advertising online, we do we do the same type of thing. And so the, we're going to talk about a few things that we can do to set ourselves apart and and really get our message across. That sounds excellent. It's, uh, good stuff for our audience for sure. And uh, we we're prepping for the show. We talked. We're, we're going to focus in on three areas so I'm just gonna list them for folks and then we can kinda of go through them one at a time so we're gonna talk about that you need to show people how you can help them obviously and then we're gonna talk a little bit about um, showing people what you really know and then finally we're gonna wrap up by talking about letting other people show your success so let's take those in order and uh, kinda of line them up and knock them down so when you're working with a client and you're talking about uh, you know really showing people how you can help them let's talk a little bit about what that means in your context and how you work with people well showing showing somebody being, being able to help somebody and being able to teach them is sort of a tricky situation because when, when we are out there writing our blogs or doing some video content or things like that that kind of kind of we're showing people what we know but especially if you're in a technical field um, some of that can just blow right over your head and it's not really helping somebody with a problem. Um, what, what the whole idea is really adding value and becoming a value to your prospects. So I guess, I guess the main point there is just um, becoming a value by helping somebody, somebody solve a problem or, or, or even create a turning point for them, sort of opening up um, new avenues for them um, so that they're they're happy to see that email in their their inbox or or see your next blog or or video that you, you put out and uh, really really adding value and becoming an asset. 
Absolutely. I think we speak very much the same language. I mean, uh, Chris and I are always talking about in that, in our sort of jargon version of that, it's that, we really tell people to focus on a core problem area that you know is critical to your audience because that's what they really care about more so than who you are. Solve that problem for you, you deliver some great value, and, and now you're on the right wavelength, right? Correct, yeah, that's exactly it. Um, and so the, there's the two, two parts there, and um, showing people what you know doesn't, isn't always um, making a connection with them. And, and, and so what you really want to do is be an educator and an advocate for your Absolutely. prospects. Yeah, we had a, a guest on uh, not that long ago who uh, used the phrase that I really love, uh, you know, education-based marketing. And I, I think it's a great way for most coaches and consultants to really kind of get into that top of mind space with their ideal audience is, you know, uh, is, is to really connect around that. So let, let's talk a little bit then about um, your second point, which really is that you do still have to show people what you know. So what's the right way to do that? And, uh, you know, what do you advise people? Well, in the past few years, everybody's everybody's getting on board with blogging. Um, social media is a great place in, in being in touch with people in comments and things like that. Um, creating videos is, for me, I think is one of the best ways when I'm watching somebody on screen. Um, it really makes a connection. And, you know, we go back to the, the old sales saying that if you can make five points of contact with somebody, then they, they you build that trust to where you can make the sale. And I think video is a great way to do that. And so that kind of plays in, in part there too. Um, writing a book is another way to show people what you know. And in, along that way, you, you're, you're educating them and, and maybe you can help them out in, in a few different ways and some, a bigger piece like a book. So uh, those are some ways that, you can, that people have been working on doing that. Tavis, I think we're speaking the same language for sure. I mean, yes, uh, couldn't, <laughs> couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah, we're you know, I don't, I'm not a real fan of video though. I mean, I yeah, just really don't like it. I, mean, I, I really, I prefer the written word. You know, it's uh, you know, it's hard to get on camera. No, yeah, you know, but the the beautiful thing about video, of course, is that you've got so much, so many layers of communication going on at the same time, right? I mean, in a blog, you have to be a pretty killer writer in order to really fully. Uh, get the emotion across and paint a picture. Absolutely. Uh, whereas in video, you can see facial expression. I mean, you and I are mm -hmm. basically looking each other in the eye, even though I, I'm outside Philadelphia and you're, you're out in Seattle, Washington, and we can right. connect this right. way. And uh, you can connect with your audience in the same way, and they can really get a sense of who you are and whether they they like your style, right? So absolutely, absolutely. And of course, it's also, as you said, all about really showing your knowledge base, showing your expertise, so that they can really connect with you. So, now I'm interested about your third point here, though, because you're talking about let other people show your success. So let's talk about that. Uh, that. That sounds quite important. Yeah, when you're doing when you're doing the first few things, and you're you're getting your message out there, and you're connecting with people, and you sort of rise up to the top top of your field, and you're you're, you're getting up there ways, and some of the people that are already doing these things. Um, you sort of get up there, and then then you're you're at a level playing field with everyone in the top, and so so that w once you get to that point, what is the next level? What's some next level stuff that you can do? And going back, in, back again to basic basic sales and marketing, um, the best refer referral is the best way to make a client. Um, having other people talk about you is like I said before, is a lot, lot, lot more powerful than having you talk about yourself sure. all the time. So um, I like to give a little example. If you're looking for a product or a service, um, like for instance, um, if you're thinking about restructuring your business, and you need to get an attorney that specializes in tax, taxes and, and restructuring, so you can benefit from that. Um, you might know somebody like maybe at the uh, local chamber of commerce that maybe some people have done business with, that's a good contact to maybe go do business with somebody like that. But right. if, if then you decide to get into Google and look around and see what you can find, um, maybe you find another website and the guy's got a video on there and you make a connection with them. And so you decide to do a little research. You pop his name in the Google box and see what comes up. And if first thing you see is this guy's written a book on uh, restructuring business. Right. Look down a little bit further, and maybe there was some tax changes, and um, he was quoted in an article on a, in, a, in a news piece on CNN or something of that nature. Or you find that he's had an article in a popular uh, business magazine. These types of things are trust triggers for people. It mm -hmm. really helps with the buying decision. And um, we always want to know what the outcome is. We're always looking for 
that that security when we're making a big decision like that. Right. You know, if you're restructuring your business, this is going to affect you for a long time, and you need to uh, be sure of your decision. Well, these these are the types of things that bring you to that next level. That's the next level stuff is having other people talking about you and having and being looked at as an authority, really. I think that's excellent stuff, uh, Tavis. I mean, people. So I often find that people think that the big issue is is the money, right? But really, people are afraid to make a stupid decision. You know, and, and you're talking about Absolutely. getting that third party endorsement, that kind of credibility, that whether it's testimonial, whether it's as seen on CNN, whether it's right. my book is on Amazon, uh, and it and it's so. Those are those are. I love what. You, what was the phrase you used? Trust trust uh, signals. Trust Trust triggers. Trust triggers. Love that. Yeah. Love that. Yeah, absolutely. Because if, as you said, if I'm getting a direct referral from someone I know, well, that that I'm getting that transfer of trust there. But if I don't have that personal referral, I need something more than just you talking about yourself, right? Um, absolutely. That's the beautiful absolutely. thing about what you're talking about. So, yeah. Um, yeah this is uh, so. So, how do you help people achieve that, though? I mean, uh, when, in your own work, I mean. Well, there's there's a number of things we can do. First of all, we find what what it specifically it is that you're good at. What is what where do you, where would you want to be spending most of your time helping people and where can you add the most value? And that in a in itself can help you stand apart. If you're a, in a general practice doing multiple things, uh, you you sort of blend in the background. But if you are the guy who's known for being best for a particular niche in 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 your line of work, that can help you stand apart. And you that that's where you can become an expert. You become an expert on that one particular thing. Like in, in the example I gave, tax law, maybe that is what you specialize in is situating businesses in that that would be your niche. Um, and then what we would do is we would we would try and get you out there, get you quoted, get get you in some magazines and some things where people can recognize you as that expert. And if you sit around and wait for somebody to come along and anoint you and say, now you're you're an expert in your field because you've been in it for X number of years. It's never going to happen. Right. Or it's going to take a really long time. Yeah. <laughs> it will take a really long time. So you're just opening yourself up to being noticed and being discovered and, and having people want to write about you and finding that content when they need when they're writing an article and they need to know who who knows about this and who who could I contact to get some information for for this this piece that I'm writing or, or you know things of that nature. So you're you're really helping people with that positioning of how how to get into those uh, places, how to get those, those that recognition, how to get that as seen on CNN kind of uh, connection, uh, so that they can achieve that. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I do. Excellent. Well, this is great stuff, Tavis, uh, and people really need to get to. It, you know, connected with you to find this out. So we've been talking with Tavis Buckland on Expert Showcase today, talking about the fact that the competition is fierce, and that there are three things that you can do here that will really get you to be the obvious choice. So uh, before I tell people how they can get connected with you and get in touch with you, let me just recap here. So we've been talking about these three things. So we've been talking about the fact that you really need to show people how you can help them, be problem focused, show them that value up front. Show them that you know what you're talking about, so, so that credibility component to uh, really show that you are the expert you claim to be in the content that you're putting out there, and then getting this kind of third-party, uh, you know, trust trigger. Getting this, this whether it's testimonials, whether it's uh, you know PR pieces, whether it's uh, getting positioned in, in a, uh, magazines, getting quoted, all that great stuff. So this is terrific stuff, Davis. So to get in touch with you, people should, uh, you know get your authority positioning guide which then get on your website which is at majormediaplacement.com did I get that right? That's right. Alright yeah. and tell me a little bit real quick what is the authority posting guide? Uh, uh, the authority positioning guide? This the, the is going to give you some give you some tips it's going to explain a little bit about what we talked about here um, you know adding intrinsic value to your business uh, and so that you can charge a little bit more and then there's a whole section and they're showing you some tips on how you can get started creating some authority for yourself there's some some real good resources in there for, for some websites that you can go to and start getting yourself out there and get noticed there you have it so get connected with Tavis Buckland go to majormediaplacement.com and get the authority positioning guide right now so Tavis thanks so much for being our guest today uh, on Expert Showcase I look forward to continuing uh, conversations and continuing to have a relationship with you in the future thanks Mark and another great Expert Showcase episode Chris what should people do right now 
Yeah, if you're watching this and you're a coach or consultant, imagine what it would do for you and your business if you were a guest on Experts Showcase. And here's the best part. Other than, other than possibly increasing your business, an appearance on Experts Showcase is free. We give you a copy of your episode so you can use as marketing collateral. And we give you a, a coaching session to go along with it to, to tell you how you can best market your episode and other tips and tricks about your, your business. So what you want to do is head on over to expertshowcase.com, click on the big yellow apply button, and apply to be our next featured guest on the Expert Showcase. Now, if you're a coach or consultant and you've already imagined what having your own internet talk show will do for you, then we want you to head to videocontent.agency and check us out, check our packages out, and get in contact with us. Let's see if we're a good fit, and let's see if we're the ones to produce you and make you the next star and have your own internet talk show. And until next time, uh, Mark, anything else? I couldn't have said it any better, so uh, just do what he said.